Huh? When was that? Um, that was kind of before I got here, and then when I got here, I just kind of uh, I took the mohawk off, and then I uh, just left it real long at the top, and then I finally switched over to like a fade. So now I got a fade. <laughs> so, uh, you know, like in all sports, staying on top is one of the hardest things. How do you think they keep it fresh? How do you think they keep it fresh? We were always talking about what's next uh, in our journey. Um, so the best is always yet to come. So that team last year went 15 and 0, and they were the best ever. But we come in the next um, the next time we have a team meeting, they're the best ever so far. So we're always striving to be our best and um, just continuing just uh, just to be our best and uh, everything else to take care of itself. But when you have that mentality of what's next, what's next, what's next. I mean, it never gets dull. So you could be 67 years down down the road, you know, and they'll be like. What was the best time of your life? And you're like, oh, it's right now, <laughs> or it's to come, you know. So, always having that mindset of just the best is yet to come. So that just keeps it fresh, and you're always striving to be better. So that phrase about last year's team so far mm -hmm. was a big deal so far. Yeah, yeah, the best ever so far. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Thank you. Hey. Um, I think just his ability to uh, extend plays. Uh, he does a great job with his legs and his arm. He's definitely uh, a guy you got to worry about. Um, and I think Dobbins does a great job of just uh, complimenting him. Just uh, that one-two punch. They do a great job with the with the run game, and then um, obviously his passing abilities is uh, very good. I think he's uh, able to read the defense uh, very well. Just uh, trying to figure out what you're in and try to manipulate it in ways, but uh, all in all, he just does a great job, just being a game, a game changer, you know. I don't think so. I think everybody's very unique um, within their schemes, and I think just uh, with him. And the scheme he's in is just perfect for him. Uh, I know he was at Georgia and had some tough times, but I think he's really just flourished in this uh, scheme at Ohio State. He's done a great job and just ran with it. Uh, you know, it is what it is. I've been I've been in this game long enough to realize that these rankings don't mean much. Uh, they've been wrong before, so you can't really get too tied up in it. But yeah, it's definitely fuel because you want to prove yourself and uh, prove your worth as a man, as a fo football player, and as a team. So it's something um, we just take in and uh, we just go about it. So obviously we we haven't done something right to be not be number one. So it is what it is, and we're just always striving to be our best. What are the challenges that you face as defense trying to prepare for a dual threat quarterback? Yeah, it's definitely tough because you got to um, make sure you got everybody covered up, and then. Um, as usually when you're going against a team, they don't really have that dual threat guy. But now you're seeing it more and more and more in college football. So you got to have extra guys. So it's all about numbers. It's a numbers game. Uh, if you ask anybody uh, that plays defense, it's all about numbers. So when you get an extra hat for a quarterback that can run, you got to have extra numbers. So it's definitely something uh, we've considered and uh, took into our prep. And, um, you know, it's, it's a part of the game. So we're really looking forward to the uh, – to the opportunity, you yeah. know. What are the things that stand out about Ohio State's offense as a whole? Um, just, I think they're very good in every single, every single um, position. You know, their O line is very tough, very physical. Um, really open up things for Dobbins, who's one of the best backs in the in the league, you know, or in the whole nation, excuse me. But um, you know, the quarterbacks great, wide receivers are great. So you know, there's not really a drop off in any any segment of their offense. So. It's definitely, um, definitely something that's going to be a very good, tough task for us. So we're really looking forward to the challenge. When do you guys get to celebrate Christmas? <laughs> so I celebrated Christmas with my mom and dad and them um, Friday night. This is the last, this past Friday, um, and then we'll have Christmas tomorrow. So we'll have that as a team. We'll have a Christmas morning uh, breakfast, take a little break, go to practice, and then uh, that'll be it. You know. So I definitely. Already done my Christmas and I'm moving on, getting ready for this prep. I'll give you presents. Nah, I wish. I think that's against the rules, but you know, if anybody wants to give us some, we'll take them. Looking at this wide receiver group that Ohio State has, what are your impressions? Definitely 
really good uh, crafty route runners, um, speed, you know, the whole nine yards. I think the tight ends do a great job as well, just being receivers and outlets for the quarterback. So you can't really take a play off when, when you're covering those guys because they're always uh, very dangerous. So uh, when you looking into that, you just got to be able to understand your scheme, understand where your help is, and uh, just be locked down the best you can, you know. You were on that 2016 team. Do you remember kind of that offense and how this was similar or different? Yeah, uh, it was JT Barrett uh, and the boys. So that was uh, Curtis Samuel was like their go-to guy at the time. I think it was Weber Jr. was a running back. Um, so we did a um, – we had kind of like a key thing on um, Curtis Samuel because he was obviously one of their better players. And then uh, just trying to contain JT. He was a very good dual threat guy as well at the time. So <laughs> just making sure he was uh, under wraps and then um, just taking care of him. We did a great job at it. How does this offense compare to that? Uh, it's, it's not the same um, by no means. I think uh, they're better in all phases. So... Um, <laughs> we're really going to have to bring it this time just because they're so much better. I think they're just better skill-wise. Oh, heard that. <laughs> um, but yeah, they're just better in every facet of the game. What does this matchup mean for Isaiah, I mean, as far as how? Is this a, obviously just the versatility that Ohio State's offense has, yeah. especially with, with what the way Fields can run the ball? Just having someone like Isaiah on defense kind of factor into trying to neutralize that? Yes and no, because I mean he's obviously featured that in a lot of game plans. But you don't want to bring the same the same thing, because people can't key in on that and they'll they'll adjust and things like that, or they've already adjusted to it what they think is going to happen. So you got to bring different aspects of the game, uh, or what you, what you do to your defense. So um, we're definitely going to have to just do different things. And um, but he's he's obviously going to be a big factor to the game. Don't let me tell you he's not. Sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but. Um, yeah, he's, he's going to have to do different things, and we're just going to use him the best that we can. You mentioned before about the route running with Ohio State's mm -hmm. receivers. How does that make things difficult on a defensive back? I mean, and do you sometimes – those, can those sometimes be tougher matchups than somebody who's more athletic but is sloppier? With their yeah, definitely. Uh, you take a guy like uh, Hunter Renfro, uh, super crafty. He's probably the hardest guy I've ever covered. You know, he beat me all the time. <laughs> but he wasn't, like, overly fast. He wasn't overly powerful. He's just super crafty. So when you got guys like that, it just makes it so difficult because they understand your leverage, they understand where they got to be. It's just, uh, it's really a nightmare, you know.